again, everyone. This is Gilmer, and this is episode one of Birth of America, Birth of America Two, Wars in America. And I said in my uh, description yesterday that it is sometimes called Birth of America Two because it is a sequel to Birth of America One. Well, it's I guess all the time called Birth of America Two because that is its actual title, Birth of America Two, Wars in America. And I have received some encouragement to keep doing this Let's Play. Okay. That's a lot louder than it... That's a lot louder than it should be. But I had it on the same setting I had Civil War II on for sound. And it seems to be a lot louder. So I'm going to have to play around with that. If it gets too bad, I'll turn the music off and, and play around with it off screen. So let's go ahead and resume our game and see what is going on. Boston Under Siege. I've already read that to you because it's still the same term. My uh, first video was really just an introduction. And um, I'm going to put a quote in the title for for just about every single one that I can do if if it's possible and the quote I'm going to use this time is a Thomas Paine quote these are the times that try men's souls and I think what he's was referring to is that they knew it was going to be a hell of a struggle they they knew that they were outnumbered their chances of victory were slim they knew that anybody supporting the rebel cause or the patriot cause or or the usa cause would be branded traitors to the british crown and would be executed as traitors and so they knew that this would be the times that try men's souls and thomas Paine actually expressed that and there were obviously other quotes almost you know or more famous than that that bring home what these guys or what these men were risking. They were risking it all. I, I think I read something, I don't know, I, you know, and maybe it's a, a failing of my history knowledge that I don't know the exact number of people that signed the uh, Declaration of Independence, but I know that the vast majority, majority of them lost either family members in the war, land in the war, their houses were burned, things like that and I'm not blaming the British for doing things like that you know war is you know things happen in war and that's that and it's you know over 200 years old and you know I mean if we got into a tit for tat as to who you know did what during what war and how many bad things each country did in what war uh, we would be here all night and I don't want to get into that I'm just just trying to point out that these men did suffer personal loss whether it be family members their own lives uh property loss whatever they they were risking a lot and um it took a it took a certain lot a certain amount of courage it certainly did and um you know we you know respect them for that and we honor them for that here in the united states and um so let's just Stop rambling and get to the actual action. So we went through the buttons F1, F2, F3, F2, uh, F2, F3, more supplies. Um, I have no uh, engagement points and this would cost 15 engagement points. I don't think it would allow me to do it. Uh, raise more militia. I wonder if two replacement militia. I wonder if it'll allow me to do it. I'm gonna try. Okay. Uh, just just for this let's play. I'm gonna turn the music off because that is too loud and I'm not going to try to talk over 
the music. I don't want to get into that game where I'm almost screaming into the mic trying to talk over the music. And uh, I will play around with it and I'll get the music right. I have it set at 15 on the volume mixer and I guess I shouldn't uh, on a scale of 100. So that's pretty low, but I'm going to I probably drop it down to 10 or so and see how that works because we don't need we don't need that. We want the music to add to the let's play. We don't want it to detract from it or distract the viewer from the let's play by going constantly thinking, "Man, this music is loud as hell." So uh that will that will occur on my next let's play. So what do we have? We have we have this garrison. Let's take a look at oops. Let's take a look at what we want to take. Pittsburgh is looks like it is not controlled. Although it says I have a Pittsburgh militia in there. I guess um you know, I know in some games it says that you have to have something other than militia in the in the city, but that's all I have is militia. So I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do in that case. Um, let's go to uh, New York. New York. See, I have Militia and I have the Hudson Bateau, but it says I don't control it. So, what do we do? Thomas's command, John Thomas. He's a good he's a good leader. I don't suppose I could switch these leaders out. The only thing is he's activated and Ward is not activated and I want to get somebody down to um, New York very quickly. And if you notice, he's active. So a lot of these icons are available for me to use. Ward, on the other hand, is not active. He can't do a lot of stuff. He can't do hardly anything when he's inactive except disband or enter a structure. Well, you know, whatever. But I really want to get somebody down to New York and actually take New York. I don't know. See, he's militia too. Wonder if wonder if it has to be a commander. You know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Cause this is a game that I don't necessarily know rewards people that wait. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go to him. Um If I fight them hell with that takes 32 days another thing about this game I'm pretty sure turns are 30 days each and so you get a little bit different dynamic there when the turns are 30 days you can go a little further um, doesn't take as many turns to get to places some most of the time but because the turns are are 30 days instead of 15 days it still takes a long time you know I don't know if it's any easy any easier or that much easier in co uh, Confederate times or the American Civil War times other than of course uh, railroads they had railroads in the Civil War and they did not during the Revolutionary War which is as I think I've mentioned 1775 to 18 uh, 1783 no, not 1883. Um, 
So this could be just kind of like, if you remember in Civil War II, the first turn was kind of a throwaway turn to get everything unlocked and get things kind of get some of the grease in the the wheel or whatever and get everything going. And so I'm just going to um, run a turn. Let's go ahead and run a turn because I don't think I lose anything by just running one turn without doing too much of anything. So let's see what happens. And um, the turns in this game go pretty quickly because there are not very many troops. I don't know what that was. I don't know what he was doing because I, I don't think I moved him. But, I, I, you know, that could have been something he did. Let's see what happens. And and as as usual, you get these filters for the messages. And you can do this. Or, well, I thought you could expand it, but this is just to scroll through. I'd rather use the mouse wheel to scroll through. New options are available. English activate a native tribe. New options are available. New options are available. The fifth to become the first Continental Army Regiment formed. Let's see, the fifth Continental. Now see, these are normal, regular line infantry. They're not militia. They're regular line infantry. And it just said I have formed. Rebel militias called to arms in the middle states. See, these are the what I was telling you about. The after the first turn, you know, during the first turn, a lot of things become active. Uh, rebel militias are called up, and it's it's fairly interesting. Some of the things. Um, the Continental Congress invites Canada to join the rebellion. Montreal must be captured by the end of 1775. Loss of EP if Montreal not captured. EP may be gained if three units reach Quebec. Yeah. Bunker Hill has arrived in Peabody at day 17. That was this guy moving back and forth. Um, this, These are all the units receiving replacements or... Uh, units to fill out their formation. You gain control of Fort Henry and Fort and Henry from Great Britain. Where's that? Oh, that's this. Okay. You gain control of Fort Ticonderoga. Ah, okay. I don't like that, though. I don't necessarily know that I can hold him off. I guarantee you he's probably not very strong, but he's probably stronger than him. Although, look at that. That guy's a 6-3-3. Uh, partisan, 30% combat bonus, and 2 extra protection to all irregular units in the stack, only in difficult terrain. This ability applies to all elements of the stack. Then what is he? Northerner. Is heavily penalized when leaving the northern area, New England, Canada, and the Middle States. This ability applies, blah, 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 blah. Mountaineer provides a 25% move bonus to the whole stack in hills, wooded hills, mountains, or alpine terrains. Hmm. I really don't want to lose Fort Ticonderoga. Oops. Uh, let's see. It is a strategic town slash fort. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Um, we used up some of our replacements. Raise more militia. Pay raise for regular for regulars. Get Twenty EP. Twenty two victory points. No. Oh, cost. Oh, it tells me what my current assets are. And it would take four engagement points. No, 20 engagement points. I don't have 20 engagement points. 
didn't I did I click raise more militia so you see it it won't let me do that more supplies siege artillery soldiers training by cannon soldiers training commission privateers I wish I could do some of that everything is bought it seems like using engagement points right now I have four engagement points you get engagement points by winning battles by capturing cities or towns and obviously you get a certain amount every turn as well that you you know based on what you control or what you've captured so basically you have to take the fight to the enemy to get a decent amount of engagement points they are up to 432 he's inactive still he is inactive as well and the, the little um, envelope that tells you if they're active or inactive is right here to the, on the left corner top corner of the person's icon so as you can tell these both have the dark yellowish oranges orangish closed envelope which means they are they are inactive so let's see Albany Garrison in Schenectady I'd, I'd just love to see that random gamer trying to pronounce that Schenectady he, he I think he'd have an aneurysm I can't hardly say it and I've I've lived in the USA and I, I actually knew somebody who was born in Schenectady and um, it's a hard name to pronounce that's for sure sounds sounds Scottish um, or something along those lines Ward Command, Thomas Command Bunker Hill that's about it four units one's a power of 91, one's a power of 221 one's a power of 432 and one's a power of 56 why is their health only 58% why are their health not that good either I don't like that um hmm we captured a fleet from Great Britain in region Crown Point nicely done his weight is four hmm As you can tell, that's how you did it in Civil War II. You just drag the land forces over the fleet icon and they will and then drop it and they will enter the fleet. What am I gonna do though? Did I really want to do that? I'm almost positive this guy is is going to take Ticonderoga back. Um, order transported land units to disembark on a coastal region so that tells me there was a little message up there that said our forces will unload in region otter I just don't think I can I can hold that guy off the 26 Cameroons or Cameroonians I don't think so I don't know maybe I should have at least um, contested it but I don't know I just got a feeling that the British are stronger than me pretty much everywhere here at the beginning of the game I wonder where are the the boxes? Okay, these are the sh Europe shipping lanes. New England shipping lanes. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't really have very many transport ships, do I? Let's look at the forces. First, Maryland. Wait a minute. What are these units? Oh man, all these units are unlocked. I thought they were locked, but they're unlocked. They're all militia. And th I guess they all, none of them have a commander. And then these that are kind of grayish, tannish, are the ones that have leaders. Man, I've got a lot of, a lot. Crap, where did that guy go? Oh, there he is. Bunker Hill. Cambridge Militia. militia. Uh, Paul Revere. Master Spy. Oh, they call him a general. Okay. I don't know. He's the guy that was supposed to... He was the guy that... When the British were attacking or, or coming to attack, he went and warned everybody by saying the Redcoats are coming. Everybody says he, he said the British are coming, but... You know, historians pretty much have discounted that and said he was actually probably saying the Redcoats are coming. Because most everybody still thought of themselves as the, you know, British. Look at all these troops. I gotta get them together. Maybe. Is he mine? No. That's a neutral, I guess, unit. Oh, wait a minute. It says it has a British flag. He's a British Indian. That might be the Indian that uh, unit that they... Um, let's see where it said. English activate a native tribe. So that's probably... Oh, there's another one. They've got a, They've got a few. That's for sure. Honestly, every time I think back on this time, I really don't know how the United States was able to win. I mean, I know the French helped, but even with the French's help, I just am amazed that they were able to win. Okay, they're locked. So let's see. Here we go. Lexington Volunteers. Yeah. Hartford Garrison, the 4th Connecticut, New London, Connecticut, Paul Revere. 1st Pennsylvania is in Philadelphia. Um, Lexington Volunteers, where are they? Okay, they're in Worcester. Um, hmm. I don't necessarily know if I want to leave them there. We'll put them in with uh, the Bunker Hill. Oh, okay. You can click on these like you can in Civil War II. The Continental Congress invites Canada to join the rebellion. In the spring of 1775, the British Army was held in a siege of Boston. During this long standoff, the American Continental Congress sought a way to seize the initiative elsewhere. Congress had previously invited French Canadians to join the American Revolution as the 14th, 14th colony, but this was rejected. Therefore, a plan was devised to drive the British Empire from the primarily Francophone colony of Quebec, which included present-day 
provinces of Quebec and Ontario. Two expeditions were undertaken. Congress authorized General Philip Schuyler, commander of the Northern Department, to mount an invasion to drive British forces from Canada. He sent General Richard Montgomery north with an invasion force along Lake Champlain. General George Washington also sends Benedict Arnold to Maine to launch a raid towards Quebec City with a supporting force. And most people know it didn't work. Historically, it did not work. Interesting try, but ultimately it failed. All right. Trying to think of anything else I can do or that I have money for, and I don't really. I just, um, I'm kind of worried about that force right there. That force right there could smash this force very easily. And I definitely don't want that to happen. I'm going to save this turn. And I'm going to click next turn. Oh, some British... I just saw a British ship either go into Boston or come out of Boston. Oh, so he did not try to take Ticonderoga. Interesting. English tried to train elite troops. Congress decides that the colonies can print paper money. To finance war and economic life, Congress decides that the colonies can print paper money known as the Continental. This measure allows Congress to cover urgent expenses, army pay in particular, but creates a galloping inflation that will imperil the cause of the revolution. Lord Dunmore escapes. Following the failed attempt to capture the powder magazine at Williamsburg in April, the position of John Murray, 4th Lord of Dunmore, Governor of Virginia, has become unsustainable. He is forced to flee from Yorktown, oh, flee to Yorktown, with a few soldiers and some of his partisans. Very well. So, that's the British... Daniel Morgan forms of his rifle regiment in Philadelphia. Ha ha! Pittsburgh in New York. So. There's Pittsburgh. 45 days. I don't know if that's the most intelligent thing I should do, but... We'll, we'll put him in with this guy and see. What's his command? Oh, he's a 644. Four. Holy shit. He's not bad. Oh, hold on a second. Hold the hell on. I can't.
This little militia unit slowing me down by 11 days. Oh well. All right. Well, that's interesting. I fleet has arrived in Champlain. Lexington Volunteers has arrived. Joined Bunker Hill. Warner's Brigade has arrived in Otter at day 10. That's this guy. And honestly, I probably could have left him wherever he was. But I was concerned that they would come down and attack me. What is this? Oh. Oh, look at that. It That little... Those little icons right there tell you the weather. So this, uh, it's, uh, the sun is shining. So it had a little circle with some, uh, see? A circle with a little, you know, sun icon, I guess. Now if I take it over here, it's raining. And it has a little cloud with a little drizzle coming out of it. There it's snowing and it's a snowflake. Pretty neat. And then, of course, the picture of the of the region is in the where it says wilderness, and a picture of the you know like a you know a, a vista of the of the region. And so this one shows snowy hills and mountain. This one shows wilderness and hills with trees on it. Uh, this one obviously shows um, water with uh, you can see land in the distance. Pretty neat. You know, I mean, I know I said that the graphics have come a long way, you know, with Civil War II. I, I kind of like the old-timey UI in a sense that the wood, you know, the the seasoned wood or whatever of the UI in this game. But I also kind of like, you know, the, the, the art here is not as realistic but it's still very, very nice. Like this one shows the forest in Westminster. Pretty interesting. It's almost like a painting. A lot of woods. This is woods. It's Oh, this is forest. This is woods. Uh, wilderness. What does this say? Wilderness, wilderness, or forest. Uh, this one says clear, which means it's developed with a major road in it. Inactive. This guy is active. He has a white envelope. This guy is inactive. They're locked. Um, let's see. These are my guys. And they're locked because these will, units will be locked as long as they are not attacked. Or I think that, like the British, I get a a decision that will possibly unlock Indi uh, Indian tribes for me. I think, although I haven't seen it. I don't want to see that. Um, I've got eight engagement points, and that's what, um, 20, 20, 15, fifteen, thirteen. sorry, I, I did just yawn, I'm sorry, it's been a long day, um, I've got that unit coming to take, or not really take, but uh, occupy Pittsburgh, which is over here. That guy's locked. So, let's see. F8, F9, morale's 100, British morale's 90. Which is what we started with. This scenario will end in 1783. 
It's turn three and 100 and turn, 102 turns remain. So, I'm going to save it. And let's run another turn just to see. Let's watch this guy. T watch uh, Morgan's rifles as the turn progresses and see what it does. One of the things about this game is as the USA you can't get discouraged. You just can't get discouraged because if you get discouraged easily you're probably going to lose because the the game at the beginning is going to be if you play it right okay see they did go after Cor Ticonderoga let's just go this way and see what he does first Maryland first Maryland has joined Morgan's rifles first Virginia where's first Virginia here we go not that one this one first Virginia Virginia volunteers Power of 72. Oh. wonder if I can take that with a, a unit that doesn't have a commander. Doesn't look like they have any troops there. Taking Yorktown would be pretty big. Um, New Jersey... Third New Jersey is now active in region Morris County. That's there. They're active. A lot of actives. Oops. Uh, New York still says it's not controlled. English equipped two natives replacements. First New York is now active in a region in region Oriskany. I guess that's that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I yawned again. I can't help it. An army formed in Albany to invade Canada. I don't really want to f invade Canada to be honest with you that's Philip Schuyler that the guy I've talked about or read about North Carolina's militias have been mobilized okay Georgia militias, militias mobilized. Until 1775, Georgia seemed to be the last colony where the British crown held some semblance of authority. But during the summer of that year, a congress was held in Savannah and decided to send delegates to the Continental Congress. The port of Savannah is closed to British shipping, and Governor James Wright looks more and more isolated. Good. Good indeed. You gain control of Savannah and region Savannah from Great Britain. Did I take as that? These bateaux, I don't think they're very, they're not strong at all when it comes to um, fighting on water. First of Maryland, first Maryland, Virginia, blah, 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 blah. I read all those. Great Britain crap. Yeah, I, I read all those. See, they captured Ticonderoga, which is a strategic city. Which means I think they get more points. Accumulated victory points. Our points accumulated from cities, 23, enemy, 20. 
So I have a slight advantage in victory points per turn, but I think it, depending on if I lose any more of these, it will be not be good. So anyway, um, they're moving to Yorktown. That's okay, I guess. Uh, engagement points 12 foreign intervention 3% you will gain or lose foreign inter foreign intervention points in the scenario depending on your national morale and your victories or, or defeats in the field after a certain level has been reached foreign powers may intervene in this scenario in your favor or against your side and all that means I think is that the French might join us if we get enough foreign intervention and if I'm winning the game, as, as as I hope to be doing, they will eventually join our side and help us defeat the British. But until that time, it's us and we're on our own. But anyway, um, this will bring to a close my first episode of Let's Play birth of america wars in america and uh i'll see you next time thanks a lot for watching goodbye